like money, motherfucker? Money be green. Money feel like money. That shit look green to you? Yeah, big title fate for the WBO super lightweight title. Now, Josh Taylor versus Teofimo Lopez Jr. Josh Taylor straight up on the money line, a minus 210. And Teofimo Lopez Jr. is a plus 162, Brian. How are you betting this? And did you expect Teofimo to obviously uh, be the underdog in this one? Not, not, not like this. I expect Josh Taylor. Look, Josh Taylor rationally is the favorite and should be because Teofimo Lopez is just more of a wild card. And what this fight really comes down to, and this is why it was so hard, like of all the fights we've had this year, to me, this is the real, like closest to a 50-50 fight because of all the variables. Like which Josh Taylor is going to show up? Is it going to be the one who lost to Jack Catterall or the one who looked great in beating Jose Ramirez? Is it going to be the one who was very competitive and 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 eked out a win against Regis Progray, even though some people thought it was a draw? Um, is which Teofimo Lopez is going to show up? Is it going to be the one that some people lost? Some people think lost to Sandor Martin, the one who obliterated Richard Comey, the one who put it all together against Vasily Lomachenko, or the one who had a dumb game plan against George Cambosos. Like, there's just so many things that could happen here. And, and for me, it just comes down to who's actually going to show up, as simple as that is, not to get first takey about it, but that's just really what it is. And I just, and then you also have the rest versus Russ. Josh Taylor hasn't fought in 16 months. Wow. That Jack Catterall fight was February of last year. Teofimo Lopez fought twice since then. Mm -hmm. Pedro Campa in August. And then he had the Sandor Martin fight that we just referenced in uh, December. But the more reliable bet here is betting on Josh Taylor because he's the favorite. But I think this goes one of two ways. I think Josh Taylor wins by decision or Teofimo Lopez wins by knockout. Yeah. I think uh, there's an old adage in boxing, as you know, like with with rust, you can test out that chin early and potentially find some success. If Josh Taylor, and sometimes he does this, he likes to fight inside. He's very comfortable fighting inside. He likes to bully some of his other opponents, right? And this is something that and he could box as well. Like he could stay on the outside. Like he's very versatile in his attack. And I appreciate him for that, right? Because he's very skilled, um, fun to watch when he's uh, when he's putting it all together. But if he hangs around too long on the inside, is Teofimo Lopez going to be able to catch him? <laughs> you know, like Teofimo Lopez was coming up in weight, but he wasn't a small lightweight, right? And Josh Taylor has height advantage, a slight reach advantage by one inch. I just think that when you look at the odds, uh, as of now, I believe it's dropped to plus 165 Josh Taylor to win on points. I feel comfortable doing that more than anything else, but I don't feel that comfortable doing it because I respect the hell out of both these guys. And I, I also am going to sprinkle on a Teofimo Lopez knockout at plus 500. I yeah. still think he's ex as explosive as a lot of guys in these lighter weight classes. And I think he can catch Josh Taylor. Potentially, maybe it's an overhand right or something along those lines. Uh, we've seen it before. We just haven't seen it in a while, but I think it goes one of those two ways. So, the bet for me is Josh Taylor on points, even though I don't feel like awesome about it because I respect Teofimo Lopez when he's putting it all together. We'll see if he does. But Teofimo Lopez plus 500 to win by knockout. You're giving me that as a long shot. I'm going to sprinkle on that as well. Yeah, I think this is probably one of the most exciting fights this year because let's be serious. What we're going to get in the ring, we're not quite sure what that product is actually going to be. Are we going to get the Josh Taylor that really did have a great performance against a guy like Jose Ramirez, dropped him twice? One of those drops, though, a little bit controversial, <laughs> uh, right? But that was a fight where I thought Josh Taylor fought really well. I also thought, though, that it wasn't like the Jose Ramirez that we're used to seeing. And coming into that fight, Jose Ramirez actually had a long layoff as well. So let's keep that in mind. And, you know, then he fights Jack Catterall. And I've been on this show saying it before. I thought Catterall won that fight and he kind of exposed Josh Taylor and I got a lot of hate for that because they were like, oh, well, Josh Taylor was injured and he went through this. Well, guess what? Yeah, he's dealing with all those injuries and has had a 16th month layoff coming into this fight. And there will be some ring rust. So what type of Josh Taylor are we going to see? And here's the thing. You mentioned it. Josh Taylor's a really good boxer. You could argue that he is the best at 140 pounds. I mean, he was undisputed, wanted that Jack Catterall fight, vacated, what, three of his four belts waiting for it, mm -hmm. and then ended up choosing Teofimo Lopez Jr. 
So, you know, it didn't really go as to plan. And I think because if Josh Taylor takes out Teofimo Lopez Jr., that's another bigger name on his resume. But I think the fact that it was a little bit of a robbery for Jack Catterall that he didn't win that fight. There's questions about uh, Josh Taylor. Also, that fight with Regis Progray, you could have said that was a draw. Could have gone either way. They could have gave that fight to Regis, and that's the truth of it. So I think there's questions for Josh Taylor. But listen, he can bang with you on the inside. He can, you know, fight from a distance. He's a good body puncher. I think he's a better body puncher than Teofimo Lopez, actually. Agree. The thing about Josh Taylor is sometimes he'll, you know, reel you in, but he's not hard to hit. And we know that Teofimo Lopez Jr. has a nasty right hand with power. I believe that is his best punch. Talk about body work. I think the best body work that we've seen from Teofimo Lopez Jr. was when he fought Vasily Lomachenko. That's when we saw him kind of control the pace and dictate the pace as well and really land to the body of Loma. And despite what people want to say, yeah, it was a close fight because Loma picked it up like how he usually does <laughs> later rounds in the fight, right? Um, but that was a fight that... Um, I thought Teo won convincingly. Like I was like, Teofimo Lopez won that fight. And I mean, there's questions about whether if De Devin Haney won that fight, right? People think Loma got robbed, but that's a different conversation for another time. Um, but One I that we've already had. <laughs> I should go on our page and go check it out because we got that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, going over to Teofimo Lopez now, I talked about his right hand. I talked about his body work. He's also very tactical because he was setting traps against Richard Comey. And that was a fight where he knocked him out of the second round. But before then, remember when he fought Nakatani, the tall mm -hmm. fighter? Yo, mm -hmm. we kind of struggled against him. He got the victory, but that was a fight where we were like, does Tio have it? Like, there was questions after that fight. So, you know, he you talked about it. It goes into that George Cambosis fight. We all know what happened. Um, no good. I rewatched that yesterday. Did I tell you that? I rewatched no. it what, yesterday. What were, what were your thoughts uh, rewatching it? Same thing? I forgot how impressed I was with how Cambosos was just stayed composed. Good game plan. Really just good game plan. stayed composed and was like, I'm just going to counter the shit out of this wild ass <laughs> attack that I'm seeing. Knocked him down in the first round. He got dropped later on, but I, look, a lot of respect. Cambosos has a fight coming up too that's going to be interesting, but... I just didn't. I, I hope. I hope Teofimo Lopez doesn't do that again. That I, I, I don't think stuck. so. I don't think so because I think he went into that fight not having re respect for George Cambosos Jr., but he does have respect for Josh Taylor. Like he has been on record saying, like, listen, Josh Taylor is a really good fighter. Like he has said that. He has respect for him. And here's the thing: is when he moved up to 140 pounds, uh, TKO'd Campa. I was at that fight in Vegas. And then after, um, you know, questionable against Sandor Martin, at first I thought it was a draw. I went back to watch it, and I did have Teofimo Lopez winning um, by one round, actually, uh, in that fight. Like, it was just by one point that he won, actually. Um, so Teofimo Lopez, the thing about him is there's a lot of what's going on outside the ring for him. He's actually in the midst of a divorce right now. How is that going to affect him? He talked about how in his last fight against Sandor Martin, when his soon-to-be ex-wife wasn't passing him his kid, like that really messed with him. Like he's gone through all of these things outside the ring. And I think the mental aspect, um, you know, no disrespect to Josh Taylor, but Teofimo Lopez has gotten a lot of hype, right? He's been this big figure in boxing for a little while now, and he's had to deal with all of this stuff. And He's in the midst of getting a divorce right now. And he talked about how his wife is trying to take half his paper. Like he's been on record saying that. So he's going through it right now. And I, the thing about it is, I don't know what type of Teofimo Lopez we are going to see in the ring. Are we going to get the one that was setting traps against Richard Comey? That was uh, dictating the pace, landing good body shots, using his jab well against Lomachenko? Or are we going to get the one that came in with a bad game plan against George Cambosis, was way too emotional, looked decent against Pedro Campo, I got it, but he got hit a lot in that fight. And uh, then you look at that Sandor Martin fight, a tougher fight, a tricky fighter, but was dealing with all that stuff outside the ring. So there's so many questions about Teofimo Lopez. But but just like Brian said, I think there's two possibilities for this fight. I think that Josh Taylor either gets the victory on decision or I think Teofimo Lopez can win by knockout. But I also think that Teofimo Lopez, depending on what version that we get, could also make this a very, very close fight on the cards. Because let's remember, like Teofimo Lopez can be that skilled guy. It's not only just power with him. We saw him be that skilled guy against Lomachenko. There's so much more riding for him on this fight because if he takes another L, what are we going to be saying about him?
He's going through this divorce. He doesn't want to lose all this paper. He wants this paper. He wants bigger fights after this. So I think for Teofimo Lopez, this might not only be the biggest fight of his career, but this could be a game changer in how his career goes next. As for Josh Taylor, I think he's going to have some big moments in this fight. I think he's going to be up on the cards for a bit, but I think Teofimo Lopez is going to have some big moments in this fight too. Josh Taylor, easy to hit. I think Teofimo Lopez is going to be able to land that heavy right hand on him. And so I'm actually just going to take Teofimo Lopez straight up on the money line at plus 162. I know that Josh Taylor is the favorite, but I think he's coming in long layoff, has dealt with a lot of injuries. That Jack Catterall fight doesn't sit well with me. And I just think Teofimo Lopez has more riding on this fight at this point than Josh Taylor. Cause if Josh Taylor takes the L, a L they're just going to rematch this. And then Tio Fima Lopez has to beat him again. And I don't know if Tio, what version we're going to get and if he can beat him twice. So to, to sum it up, I have as my best bet, if you want to call it that, even though, again, the reason why I like this fight so much is because I really don't know, but yeah. Josh Taylor points plus 170, 175, 165, depending on where you look. Hedge bet, Teofimo Lopez knockout plus 500. Chantel's going with Teofimo Lopez straight up on the money line plus 162. A little bit safer. Recording. A little bit safer. Like if you're going to ride with Teo. Yeah. Um, but I do think there is a lot to value. A look. Yeah. I think there's a lot to good value on that plus 500 for that knockout, though, because I do think that he's going to be able to land on Josh. And what happened in that Jack Catterall fight? Jack Catterall dropped him. And let's be serious. Teofimo Lopez has a lot more power than a guy like Jack Catterall. So that chin is sus to me. Yeah, I, I gave it a look. Teofimo on the money line. I just don't know what Teofimo Lopez we're going to see. But ultimately, like, this is why, like, I, I, I'm glad that we're getting this fight. This is the fight of the month to me. Um, One of the three fights of the year, probably so far in terms of like big matchups that I don't quite know where this is going to go. Yeah. Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia. I had more of an inkling, but I still felt like Ryan Garcia, live dog. And then uh, Devin Haney, Vasily Lomachenko. I had an inkling, but I still felt like Lomachenko could pull this off. And to a lot of people, he did. But this one, I I just like this is this is why I like this fight, right? And this is why we all, as uh, watchers, whether you're media, whether you're a fan, whether you're, I guess both. You get frustrated with the sport sometimes because these type of fights don't come together. So I'm appreciative that we get one of these because we have a lot of like good fights this month in terms of at least one side is really good. But this is pretty even to me, even though Josh Taylor is a two to one favorite, which I find interesting. But again, the reliability, we don't know about uh, what Teofilo Lopez we're going to see, how volatile he could sort of be yeah. and uh, how he looked in his last fight. But I'm glad we're getting this fight. Ultimately, those are our bets. That's where we are. And uh, if you're watching this again, do subscribe to the channel because, uh, again, we're not assholes and uh, we're hoping that you're not assholes. And uh, we're just trying to have some good discussion here, trying to build a good product. So, yeah, if you like the content, thank you for watching. Um, pardon the so, yeah, said it again, but whatever. Um, if you like the content, thank you for watching and uh, be sure to subscribe. It really helps the channel. We're trying to do uh, something a little bit different here and not just like curse everyone out who doesn't agree with our opinions or whatever like just be respectful we could debate we could do it in the comments we could do it in the dm whatever the case may be but just be here uh for when we do these type of things and we're planning on a post fight show after josh taylor versus teofibo lopez so make sure you come in for that hang out have a good time drop some comments um you know just be just be cool man they're just like we got we got fucking wildfire residue canada smoke in new york city whatever like oh yeah because like in halifax and stuff um it's pink and orange cool, skies yeah. right now like I, I don't i don't need smoke from like you know people who are like super supportive about their favorite fighter or whatever like it's not that serious let's just have a good time have some productive conversation and just leave it at that and